Welcome to another CEO Wisdom Podcast with Dr. Bernd Ullmann with us today. He is founder at Anabrid. We're going to discuss analog computers, who knows, quantum computing, maybe maybe AI, uh, technology, the history of technology, and where we're going to be in a near future and where we are today. Uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to nerd out big time, you're going to see. And this podcast is brought to you by my podcasting company, my agency. If you want to start scale, be invited to podcasts like this one or find sponsors. I am the monetize into podcasting. If you want to find more info, you can go to podpire.com. Bernd, welcome to the pod. Can you tell me a bit more about yourself and Anabrid? Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I was interested in analog computation since my teenage years. In fact, I built my very basic uh, first analog computer when I was 14 years old. And the idea of non-algorithmic computation has never ceased to fascinate me. And three years ago, uh, I and three of my best friends uh, went out to start a company devoted to developing analog computers for the 21st century, Anabrit, uh, a portmanteau of analog and hybrid. And our goal is to develop a reconfigurable analog computer on chip in CMOS technology, which can be used uh, as a co-processor, for example, for uh, high performance computing or for applications in neural networks and the like. Pretty cool. And Anabrid itself, how did it got started? Basically, it uh, was us four founders uh, who all shared fascination with analog computing. And as of now, we have grown quite a bit. We have three locations here in Germany. Uh, our office headquarters are in Berlin. We have a location in Frankfurt where the chip development is taking place. And we have a large lab space in Ulm uh, where we work on a large scale reconfigurable analog computer, which is um, which we developed for the German DLR, that's basically the German equivalent to the NASA Research Center. And uh, we are doing this work um, under the umbrella of the German Quantum Computer Initiative, all, although we build analog computers. But analog computers can do several things which are typically attributed to quantum computers only. So it's not a complete mismatch. Interesting. Tell us about the history of analog computers and where is that taking us with quantum and AI picking up major speed? That's a dangerous question. I can talk for hours on end on this topic. Um, the his analog computing has a much longer and more picturesque past than digital computing. The very first analog computer dates to about 100 before Christ, the mechanism of Antikythera. And analog computing was the main computing paradigm well into the 1960s, 1970s. Without analog computers, we would not have seen the advances in aerospace technology, in car development, in railroad development, whatever. It was only about in the late 70s, early 80s, the digital computers became so cheap that they really could um, po pose the real uh, problem for analog computers. Digital computers couldn't compete with analog computers with respect to computational power for many, many years uh, to come. But they were so incredibly cheap that you could always argue, let's buy a cheap digital computer, which we can use in a time shared fashion, instead of a large scale, very expensive analog computer, even if the analog computer would be much faster in solving problems we are interested in. And this caused a hiatus in the development of analog computers since the 1980s. So we, and not only analog, uh, not only Anabrid, but also other uh, companies in the market, are now working frantically on closing this technological gap since the 1980s and bringing analog computing to the 21st century in the form of reconfigurable analog computers on chip. And if you think of artificial intelligence, for example, then that is the perfect area of application for an analog computer. Since an artificial neural network basically tries to mimic a biological neural network. And we are not very good at mimicking biological neural networks. We have no idea how a biological neuron really works. It's much more complicated than our mathematical surrogates of uh, neurons. 
And it's basically not the right direction to apply lots of linear algebra to basically simulate a three-dimensional structure of computing elements, which is found in the biological brain. And it would be much more natural and much more energy efficient to actually build analog neurons and interconnect them in a three-dimensional fashion, something which IBM, for example, is actively working on. So I think one of the main areas of application for analog computers in the next years and decades to come is definitely uh, artificial intelligence. Since, for example, you can implement neural networks which are way more energy efficient than their digital counterparts and way more means at least one or two decades uh, more energy efficient. You can integrate them much higher and given the higher energy efficiency, you can, for example, even think at least think about three-dimensional interconnects which would enable much higher complexities of the neural networks compared to our current artificial neural networks. Other applications, especially triggered by the higher energy efficiency, are for example medical applications, heart pacemakers, brain pacemakers, uh, in vivo monitoring of tumors during chemotherapy or whatever, or uh, always on devices, uh, trigger word detection. There's a plethora of potential application areas for analog computing, which have to be exploited in the next couple of years. With Anabred, do you build these computers for um, other brands? Do you do consulting? What is it that you do exactly? How do you make money? <laughs> At the, uh, we have uh, we have a modular analog computer which um, we sold quite which sold quite well uh, the so-called model one but that's not very interesting from a technological point of view um, we also have the so-called the analog thing which is an open hardware project and sold uh, incredibly well um, the main purpose of the analog thing is to bring analog computing basically to the masses something quantum computing still cannot do you cannot buy a tiny quantum computer for your desktop just to get your hands dirty with real and quantum computing. That's something which is much simpler using analog computers. Um, we have some um, customers for whom we develop large scale systems, but uh, our main purpose at the moment is really developing analog computers on a chip and these chips will, our, will be our main products. As um, a scientist, what uh, do you spend your time thinking on? I'm, I'm seeing that you reason in mostly algorithm and mathematical ways. When you look at reality, what do you see? I personally, when I look at reality, I see mostly dynamical systems and differential equations uh, governing these dynamical systems. And this helps a lot when you think about analog computers. A real problem that analog computing as such faces is the imp impedance mismatch between what we teach our students in university or our pupils in school. We basically train people to think in an algorithmic way, but nothing in nature works algorithmically. Digital computing, as interesting and fascinating as it is, is a completely unnatural way to computation. Everything in nature is 100% parallel. You have no central memory, you have no algorithm. And that is a real problem to get young people not only interested, but to get them up to speed in unconventional computing, regardless if it's analog computing or quantum computing. What is the difference between analog computing and normal computers of nowadays? Let's say this M2 chip MacBook Air that I am using right now. Base, the main difference is um, that an analog computer, as well as a quantum computer, uh, for that matter, is not programmed by an algorithm. If when you have a traditional digital computer, it basically executes an algorithm in a sequential way. It executes very simple machine instructions, such as add something, jump if the result is zero, on this level. The problem with this algorithmic approach is, apart from the definite plus that you can basically compute everything which is computable, the problem is that you basically serialize all your uh, problem solutions. An algorithm is per se as my, is something highly sequential. And it's quite difficult to spread an algorithm over many cores to achieve speed ups from parallel processing. 
An analog computer, on the other hand, has no memory. It has no algorithm. An analog computer only consists of computing elements, and your program is the interconnection of these computing elements, a little bit like a simple brain, if you want. A brain consists of neurons, and what makes your brain special and my brain special is the interconnection of these neurons, which neuron is coupled to which other neurons, and which input weights do the individual neurons have for their individual inputs. And that's how you program an analog computer. So basically, you build an electronic model for a problem you want to solve, and you let just physics solve your problem. The advantage of this approach is you are 100% parallel. There is no memory which slows down your computation. There is no von Neumann bottleneck which hampers parallel processing. Nothing like the problems you encounter in digital computers. And our current digital computers are about to hit physical boundaries. We will not see substantial increases in clock frequency, for example. Um, I have no idea what your MacBook is clocked with, but my, my MacBook is running at three gigahertz, which is not very impressive since I have a notebook that is 23 years old and also runs at three gigahertz. The problem is energy consumption rises about, uh, with this, according to a square law, in, coupled to the clock frequency. So there won't be a digital processor with 20 gigahertz of clock frequency. We also cannot squeeze so much more transistors on a given chip real estate, since in the end, we have to build circuits from atoms and atoms are not that tiny as one might think. So we can't expect much benefits from increasing clock, clock frequency. We cannot squeeze more than a couple hundred million transistor functions into a chip. And that is a stark contrast to, for example, an analog computer. An analog computer can be built as large as you want, and it's much simpler than a digital computer. Adding two values in an analog computer is basically two resistors and three resistors and an operational amplifier, maybe 10 transistor functions to add two values with a given precision. To add two values with a comparable precision on a digital computer, you need hundreds of transistors. It's much more complicated to build a digital computer than building an analog computer. So we will really see a paradigm shift in, compu in computing. Analog computers will extend our digital machines as will quantum computers, but quantum computers will take a long, much longer time until they are really ripe for a market application. Right. And for your business, what is your priority this year? Uh, sorry, my what? Your business. Um, what is your priority this year? We are, uh, this year we have concentrated mostly on developing analog computing elements suitable for integration on integrated circuits. When you build electronics, it's a huge leap from discreetly built analog circuits to an integrated circuit. And one of the main hurdles uh, is something which is simple on first glance, uh, multiplying two values. Um, but it's really hard to perform an analog multiplication of two values in CMOS technology. So we are currently expanding our collection of computing elements um, so that we can, I hope next year start Actually, actually developing a full-fledged analog computer on a chip which is fully reconfigurable. So no specialized chip which can only do artificial intelligence or only do some trigger word detection or whatever, but something that is really reconfigurable and can be applied to a wide variety of applications. Interesting. And uh, what challenges do you foresee for analog computers, quantum computing, and if you can give us a timeline of where do you think um, these technologies will start to merge and where we will possibly enter uh, the singularity? <laughs> Good question. Um, personally, I'm a bit skeptic about quantum computing. As interesting as it is, the problems are really nearly insurmountable, especially error correction, for example. There are many approaches to use quantum computers without elaborate error correction schemes, but um, I, I still have to see that actually work for real life problems. Since analog computing is really much, much simpler to implement and develop than a quantum computer, I'm pretty sure that uh, we will see real 
hardware, real analog hardware to extend digital computers in the next two to three years. Quantum computers, at least 10 years, at least my personal guess before we can buy a quantum computer, which is really usable, does not require highly elaborate cooling systems and whatever. So analog computing is much simpler, but it cannot do everything a quantum computer can do and vice versa. So it's not really a concurrent scheme, but something which extends both computing paradigms extend each other. Although there are things which can be solved with an analog computer, which are typically attributed to quantum computers, for example, optimization problems, which can be solved with oscillator-based easing machines, for example. But um, I think the next two to three years, we'll see analog computers on chip on the market. There are already some companies who have analog computers on chip, but for very small niches in the application area. But I doubt that we will see quantum computers being ubiquitous computing systems in the next five to 10 years. What does a future of AGI intertwining with quantum computer looks like to you? That's a good question. I'm not an expert in quantum computing, actually. I've spent most of my uh, uh, lifetime thinking and working in the realm of analog computing. But I think eventually we will have machines which have a digital computer at their very core because our software base is much too large to give up on this. And digital computing is much too versatile to replace it by something else. And that is not what we plan to do with analog computing. But what we plan to do is to develop coprocessors, analog coprocessors for digital machines, which will enable these hybrid systems to solve certain kinds of applications much more time and energy efficiently than currently possible with digital solutions only. And eventually, we will also have quantum computers coupled to such super hybrid systems. So I'm sure we will retain the digital computer and will extend it with coprocessors, analog coprocessors and quantum coprocessors. And what do you want to accomplish in your lifetime on this earth? <laughs> Bring analog computing back to the 21st century, of course. It's what keeps me awake at night and what keeps me busy, busy during the days. Thank you for the interview today, Dr. Bernd. Where can people find out more about you? Um, basically, just Google my name. Um, you will find lots of references, uh, YouTube talks and uh, my homepage. That's uh, analogmuseum.org. There you can have a glimpse at my collection of classic analog computers. And of course, if you look up Enabrit, uh, the company, you will see what we are currently working on, if we are hiring or whatever. And that was Charles Cormier for another CEO Wisdom Podcast.com as your host and Dr. Bernd Hulman.